Hey guys, welcome to the second video for the Thrustmaster eSwap. This is a video where we're just gonna literally go over what the controller can do, how you can set up buttons with or without the app, and how you can play with the app itself. With that being started, let's not waste no more time and make this video as quickly as possible. Let's go. So the very first thing we're talking about is the mapping feature on this. This is actually pretty simple. If you don't want to use the map or the app, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and do it, knock this one out. So you can just kind of go ahead and set two profiles up and be on your way. So the first thing you'll do is you'll hit mapping. Once it's blinking, you will hold the button on the back of the controller and then hit whatever button you want to program while holding the back button. So I want to program Y. I'm going to hit it and what's going to happen. It's gonna vibrate, it's vibrating my hand. Once it's vibrated, it is now set up. I can go over here to my, uh, let's go ahead and switch over real quick so you can see. I can go over here to my my gamepad tester and I have the back button that I just programmed to Y, which is B3. If I hit that button again, so hit that button again, it's blinking, hold that back button and this time I'm gonna hit B. It's vibrating and then if I go back, you can see now it is B1 for that back button instead of B3, which was Y. So that's just a quick, simple way of how to do that and not have to worry uh, about the app itself. You can do that with both buttons, by the way. So after you program your buttons themselves, you can disprogram if you don't want them associated with anything. It's actually pretty simple to do. All you'd have to do is hold the mapping button down right here like so. And once you hold it down, you hold the back button that you want to disable. So hold it like so. This actually will take a few seconds, but once it happens, you will know because the controller will start vibrating like crazy. And there you go. The controller vibrates like crazy, actually for a few seconds even. So once it's once it's done vibrating and stuff, it's still vibrating. It's literally still vibrating. You can see here, I'm hitting the back button. There's nothing associated. If I hit the other back button, it's still associated because I didn't dislocate that button or turn it off or whatever you want to call it. All right, next up on the list is how to switch between profiles. It's pretty simple. Just hit this button right here. Hit this button right here and you should be good to go. The little button that has a little circle on it. Can't really get a close up on it, but you see what I'm saying? Anyways, if I go here, I'm on B1 and B2. And if I hit that button, I should go to B4 and B5. So simple as that. Now let's go over here and check out how to turn down the lights on this controller itself. So say you don't want these lights on or whatever, you literally hold this button down, this, the profile switch button and press down on the D-pad. And then you, there you go, you have them all the way up, all the way down, you don't want them, you want them a little bit lower if you're playing in the dark or whatever the case may be, you're good to go. You can set them up just like that. Real quick, while we're doing the video, I just wanted to hop in here and tell you that this takes a lot more work to create two videos for a controller instead of one. So it'd be very encouraging and it'll let me know you guys do like this kind of content and gals, I ain't forgetting about y'all, that you like the video and let me know in the comments below. I don't typically ask for that, but I do wanna know if I'm just wasting my time on making these videos or not, or if you guys and gals actually like these videos stand alone from the review videos. This is something new we're trying here on the channel and I just really, this is our channel and want some feedback on what I'm doing. So let me know what you think of a video like this standalone. All right, let's get back into it. All right, here we are. So we're at to the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Controller. Now I'm using this on the PC. You can use this on the Xbox as well. The app looks exactly the same. So don't worry about that. If you're like, oh, why is he on PC? It's the same, literally the same. It's just easier for me to use a mouse other than the controller, which you can use the controller to go through and set up this as well. I just like to use the mouse because I can get to things a little bit faster. All right, let's start from profile one. You got two profiles, right? So you can set two different profiles up itself. You can do a 180 degree turn right here for whatever reason, if you want to do that. Moving on to mapping. All right, so right here you have your mapping. Now this is a little bit more advanced. You can literally map any button on the controller you want, which is pretty cool. If you maybe you're used to like a Nintendo Switch and you got an Xbox, but you don't really play it a lot and you would rather have the Nintendo Switch button layout, you can do that. You can just come here and change all these buttons around and just you'll be good to go. And as well as the buttons on the back right here, as you can see, you'll just click here and then whatever you want to assign to that button. Before you move on, I would just go ahead and recommend hitting save 
Uh, every time you're on a page, that way you don't have to issue. If you don't save it, it won't save and you'll be like, why didn't it work, Pew? You can come here and then also just switch between profiles, making it a little bit easier to set buttons up and stuff. That way you don't have to keep going back to the home page to go to profiles, which is a nice little touch they added to this. See, if I would have left without saving, it wouldn't have saved it. Now it's saved and now I'm back on profile one. All right, so let's talk about sensitivity curve and what you can do in here and stuff like that. Uh, I'll be 100% honest with you. I am still learning about the sensitivity curve part. I I'm not 100% on how this works and what it does and how it makes you a better player or uh, cheating or something like that. People have talked about you, you can cheat with it. I'm not sure. Uh, but what I do want to talk about is the joysticks themselves. So right here, the center, this is going to uh, be for, you know, dead zone. So if you notice your stick is drifting a little bit in game and stuff, you can come here and turn up the dead zone. And what it does is take the value of the middle, as you can see the circle on the screen getting bigger, and that will keep you from drifting. Now that's a band-aid fix, it's not recommended. Uh, hopefully, once you get the controller out of the box, you can be at either a one, a zero, one or a two. Uh, I do believe with this controller, I have to be at a two to be pretty much uh, centered. For the left joystick, remember if you watched the previous review of the controller I was talking about, it did not have a center uh, circle on the gamepad tester itself. Uh, I'll link that video below and at the end of this video though. So yeah, you can do that. That's pretty much what you do here. If you know about the sensitivity curves and you wanna recommend a video or something to me, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I am trying to learn about this. This is probably one of the only areas I don't know really good about controllers. So I'm starting to dig in and do even more research on that. Once you set your uh, dead zones on your joysticks, make sure you save before you move on. I've already saved, so we're gonna move on. Now we're here to the triggers themselves. Now, this is what I have my trigger set up at, as you can see here. So this green right here just says how far you go until you hit 100%. And this one is just where, how far you have to press in pretty much to get it to recognize. So what I do, I don't go all the way down. The reason why I don't go all the way down is because if you're playing and you barely tap it, you're gonna actuate it. So what happens is if you, you're gonna be shooting a lot more than you wanna shoot and stuff like that, giving positions away. So I'd say bring it up to about 5% or something like that. And that way, you, if, even if you tap it a little bit, it's not really gonna come on. If you have it down, see I'm tapping it like this. If I go down here, you can see it every now and then it's, it's coming up, so. We're gonna, we're gonna set that there. And then with this one, we're gonna actually set all the way down. Because what happens is, instead of 100% being right here, 100% is now here. And I'll show you real quick. Let's go to Gamepad Tester. So B6 is Gamepad Tester, right? So I'm I'm already 100%. I got the, uh, I got the trigger stops on, I'm not all the way in, and I'm already 100%. I can still press in more before I hit 100, before I'm in 100%. So that is why we do that. That's why I have that set up like that. You do the same thing for the other side and it's just gonna make your pretty much hair triggers. That's pretty much what they are. You got trigger stops and now hair triggers at the same time, which is gonna make you a little bit better. Hopefully you're not trash like I am. Make sure you save it and then we're gonna move on to vibration, vibration. <laughs> Anyways, so I, uh, I I turn all mine off. I FPS shooting games, I don't have them on because trying to shoot while vibrating, it's gonna move your, your joysticks oh so slightly and you're gonna miss crucial headshots and body shots and stuff like that. So if you're trying to be a sweat, turn them all the way down. If you're not and you're just in it for the experience, you know, set them where you want it. You got control over all four rumble packs that are in the controller itself, which makes it nice. If you want to test this, all you would do is it says to test left wing vibration, hold X and press left trigger. So I'm gonna hold X, I'm gonna hold left trigger. Nothing's happening. Why? Because I don't have them turned up. So I'll turn it up, hit it. Now I feel it vibrating. The bottom rumble pack is vibrating in the controller and I know it's working. So you can do the same thing over here, hold X and hit the right trigger when you set them where you want them and get that precise rumble that you want in your hands. Moving on. Save, continue. All right, from right here, you can go over here to the settings menu and just check to make sure you don't have an update for firmware. It looks like I am updating firmware. Well, or I did, I'm not sure, firmware version when this video came out, which is December 6, 20, well, I'm recording it December 6, 2023, but uh, whatever you're watching it, just know we're on firmware version 53. So if you're any, you know, 
If you're a month out and watching this, you maybe check to make sure your firmware doesn't need to be updated. Thrustmaster version, driver version, all that you can see here. And then you come here to get the uh, user manual if you want. And we're not gonna worry about that. All right, there you have it. That's how you set up the controller. Super simple, super easy. Hopefully I answered all your guys and gals questions. If you have a question about the controller itself, make sure you leave a comment below. And if you haven't checked out the review and you're thinking about buying this controller, I highly recommend doing that because I do have some cons on this controller in particular. Make sure you check out the video right here for that. And if you just want to see it, check out one of my other controller videos for Xbox. Make sure you click on one of the videos over here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and love.